It's for work, you know. Even as his daughter protested, her father, Kenny, wouldn't listen. You really should cancel that trip. His daughter was desperate, trying to get him to stop. We had originally planned to hang out this weekend, just the three of us. I even turned down an invitation from my friends for this. Hearing his daughter's plea, Kenny seemed to feel a bit guilty. However, unfortunately, it didn't look like he was going to cancel. Of course, I had adjusted my work schedule to make plans for the weekend, so I couldn't help but give Kenny a stern look. Is this trip really so important that he can't cancel it even at his only daughter's earnest request? During weekends, it's usually golf outings for client entertainment or working overtime for a holiday shift. This weekend was supposed to be our chance to finally go out together, just the three of us. Kenny looked at me with eyes that seemed to plead, understand me, will you? No way, I thought, feeling really disillusioned with my husband. I'm Emily Miller, 38 years old. I live with my husband Kenny and our daughter Hannah. We bought a condo near my workplace, and we've been living happily together. Kenny works for a well-known corporation. It seems that he, being of a certain age, is gradually being entrusted with larger projects as a mid-level employee. I work for a company that does business with his corporation. After returning from maternity leave, I'm now holding a decent position. Since we both work, we're financially comfortable, able to travel together or dine out. Our daughter Hannah is also sincere, and I believe she's a good kid even without being a doting parent. Kenny adores her, and unlike what you often hear, she doesn't dislike her father at all. We've lived our lives in gratitude every day. However, it hasn't all been good. Kenny doesn't do any household chores. I can understand if I were on maternity leave and home all day. But nothing changed even after I returned to work. Childcare, cooking, cleaning, laundry, it all falls on my shoulders. Feeling at my limit. I asked Kenny to at least help with half of the childcare or chores. His response was irritating. I earn enough that you could quit your job if you wanted. If you don't like it, why don't you just quit? He flatly refused to help. Looking back, I might have been experiencing something like postpartum depression. It became clear that Kenny's kindness was only superficial, not truly caring from the heart. Friends might think he appears kind because he acts affectionate towards Hannah when colleagues are around, but they don't see the reality that I do. When things get tough, I hire a babysitter or outsource housework without discussing it with him. While watching the neighboring couple with their children, I longed for my husband to have such thoughtfulness. Even complaining about someone's husband not washing dishes properly sounds bitter because of how hard my days are. Hannah has grown well, and I've fully returned to work. As she started elementary school and our life settled into a new routine, Kenny began going out more. On weekends, it's drinking parties, social gatherings, business golf, or barbecues with his colleagues of the department, hardly ever at home. I just want to spend our rare days off together as a family. I want to go on outings as a family. I want to go out with daddy. Hannah has started to plead with me. While I always make sure she has fun shopping or at the movies, she clearly misses having her father with us. Kenny doesn't consider her feelings at all. I'm going camping with colleagues tomorrow. I'll be staying overnight, so I won't be home. He quietly told me before bed. Occasionally take us camping too. Hannah wants to go with you. I couldn't keep my patience anymore, feeling sorry for our daughter who's been enduring so much. I'm not good with bugs, so taking me camping is out of the question. At that, my husband's mood quickly soured. I'm going with colleagues because it's part of my job. We're not just lounging around like you guys. Don't talk nonsense. He snapped angrily. He has always had a temper, but never before had he said such harsh words without us even arguing. Rather than getting angry, I was too shocked to speak. Hearing his shouting, our daughter, who looked startled, came out of her room. Daddy, what's wrong? Did I do something bad? Are you upset because you're busy with work? Let's play together on your next day off. As she said this, 
She hugged him tightly. Feeling awkward in front of our daughter, my husband muttered an apology and retreated to the bedroom. Left alone in the living room, I was still irritated and couldn't accept it. Indeed, he had been popular since college, known for being the life of the party and liked by everyone, regardless of gender. I had always admired that about him. Thinking about it, it seemed strange to be upset over that. It's no wonder he's relied upon at work just like he used to be. Though I was still not satisfied, I decided not to push further as it seemed problematic to deny my husband's strengths as a wife. After seeing our daughter's sad face, my husband's weekend outings began to decrease. She has built a good relationship with her father. However, even though he goes out less, he doesn't help with the chores, we just manage to go out as a family now and then. Most of the housework and childcare still fall on me. My dream of doing simple chores together like cooking dinner or working together on trendy DIY projects to build a storage shelf doesn't seem likely to come true. But as a teenager, our daughter enjoys outings with the three of us, always pleading with her father about where she wants to go. He seems not entirely averse to it, and they were planning to go to an amusement park next month. I always watched these scenes with a smile. Today, after a long time, I went to the mall just with my daughter. Why just the two of us? Because my husband had left in the morning to hang out with colleagues. Shopping with my daughter was a blast, just like hanging out with a sister, laughing and checking out various stores. With my husband around, I always feel bad about leaving him out, so I can't fully enjoy exploring the mall. Let's eat something tasty. She said as we walked through the food area. That's when I saw the profile of my husband, who I had seen off in the morning. As I approached to call out to him, I noticed a young woman beside him. Seeing me frozen in shock, my daughter seemed to realize. Mom, isn't that? I felt weak at the knees. Her face looked like she was about to cry. He said he was with a colleague, so maybe that's who it is. Trying to stay calm, I spoke to her. That can't be right. Even I can see it. It's obvious dad is cheating. I didn't tell you, but I've suspected it for a while now. Her words shocked me even more. I thought he was just hanging out with colleagues, maybe I was just being oblivious. Overwhelmed with disbelief, my daughter added more. Actually, I've sometimes peeked at dad's phone. You never suspected, so I pretended not to know, but I've seen messages that looked like he was cheating. I was shocked staring at my daughter. She knew but had pretended everything was normal for my sake. It wasn't my fault, but I felt an immense guilt toward her. Look, mom, now's our chance. We need to catch him in the act and gather some evidence. We can decide what to do after that. Unable to accept reality, she pulled me along as we followed my husband. He was sitting at a travel agency counter with that woman. To avoid detection, my daughter and I walked past the area, only to find a page from a Florida travel brochure open. They were leaning in close, laughing quietly as if they were planning a romantic getaway. He's never even discussed going on a trip with us, but he seemed happy to be planning one with his affair partner. It was heartbreaking, considering how happy he used to be just going to the local amusement park. I wanted to scream out loud, but in front of my daughter, I couldn't and my mind went blank. I don't even remember how we got home. They say extreme shock can cause memory loss, and that was exactly what happened. Lately, Dad's been saying he has sudden business dinners and will come home late, so we should go to bed first. Sorry. Only upon hearing the voice of my daughter did I snap back to reality. Half a month later. I'm going on a trip for a week starting tomorrow. He said it nonchalantly. When I asked where, he said it was a company retreat. In my mind, I muttered, so it's that cheating trip. It's sudden, isn't it? Who are you going with? I almost confronted him, but asked calmly as usual. It's a work trip, a company outing. I'm going with the usual colleagues, must have forgotten to tell you. He continued to feign ignorance. While inwardly calling him a big liar, I was curious to see how he would lie his way out. Hearing us, my daughter came over. Dad, what are you talking about all of a sudden? 
Didn't you promise to hang out with me tomorrow? She must have realized it was the cheating trip. She tried to stop him, talking more earnestly than usual. Her desperate plea didn't work this time. In the past, persuading by my daughter had been foolproof, but it seems impossible today. It's a work obligation. My husband maintained his innocence. You really should cancel that trip. My daughter pressed him again to cancel it. I listened to their exchange with a pounding heart. Sorry, let's go when I have a day off from work. These work obligations are important too. With that one statement, something inside me snapped. Not only my daughter, but I too had hoped to let his affair go if he had taken this advice into consideration. I felt no anger, pain, or sadness anymore. It was more like a sense of emptiness, as if a hole had opened up in my heart. Unaware of our feelings, my husband started packing for his trip tomorrow. He left early the next morning. A week later, he returned late at night. He seemed in high spirits, possibly influenced by a bit of alcohol. Samuel, my colleague, you see. He began with what seemed like a fabricated story. After he finished his story, he said he was tired and quickly went off to bed. I sighed as I put away his things, telling myself this was the last time. The next day, still looking tired, he said, wonder if everyone at work is doing well, and left for work, unaware of what awaited him. An hour later, around the time I figured he would have reached work, my phone rang. What did you do at work? When I got there, they told me I was fired. His voice is pretty furious. He must have been summoned by his boss and given a severe scolding. Plus, he was probably given cold looks from his subordinates as well. It was expected since I had made sure to lay the groundwork while he was away. I don't know what you're talking about. I have to go to work now, so don't bother me. I said sharply and hung up. I figured he must know I was feigning ignorance but I was tired of being nagged over the phone. A few hours later, my husband stormed into my workplace. I was told I'm fired because I went on an unauthorized trip with another woman for a week. What's this about? Rewind to half a month earlier. Still reeling from the shock, my daughter had said to me, Mom, I'm on your side. I've even taken photos of the affair messages to help if needed. It seems that his guard was down in front of our daughter, as he was boldly looking at messages exchanged with the affair partner. Upon seeing that, it appears my daughter took a photo of them with her own phone. Of course, she remembered his password and had monitored him while he was away. All without showing any signs, always appearing cheerful around him. I was surprised at how much my daughter had grown without my realizing. I thought she was still a sweet little girl who needed me, but she had been watching out for me in her own way. On the other hand, all trust one had in my husband was gone. I thought he was just being the life of the party at work, but I had been deceived all along. The realization made me feel ridiculous and too humiliated to even cry. From that anger, my daughter and I discussed and started the process of getting a divorce. I decided I had to be strong not just for my daughter's sake, but I couldn't keep feeling down about it. I could have hired a detective to investigate my husband's actions, but that would cost money, and we already had substantial evidence. So first, I placed a GPS tracker in an inconspicuous part of his bag. It was to check if he was really coming straight home from work as he claimed. Whenever there were dealings with my husband's company, I took the lead, probing about him and his workplace. It quickly became clear that he was stopping at hotels after work or dining at upscale bistros. I also found out that there were no outings or trips with colleagues like he claimed at his company. My suspicion turned into conviction, and instead of feeling down, I focused solely on making him regret his actions. My daughter and I had solid evidence. We decided that if he canceled the affair trip, we would let it go, but if he went, we'd ruin his life. That's why she desperately advised him to cancel, but he left without noticing. Of course, my daughter was monitoring his phone, so we already knew all the hotels he would stay at. I took time off work and gathered solid evidence of the affair trip in the first three days. 
Then, with enough photos to make it indisputable, I returned home first. On the fourth day, I took them to his company and spilled everything to his boss. The boss was shocked, having heard from my husband that my wife's father had passed away, and I need a week off, only to see me, his wife, appear at work as usual. It was embarrassing and disappointing to know he'd stoop to such lies. Truly, this is not behavior befitting a nearly 40-year-old man. It's irresponsible to both his family and his company. His boss said indignantly, promising to fire him as soon as he showed up for work. Unaware of this, my husband went to work. Naturally, he faced his boss's wrath and was scoffed at by his subordinates, utterly disgraced. I quietly celebrated that my two weeks of gathering evidence had paid off. As I was laughing to myself, the phone rang again. Don't hang up on me. Because of you, I'm in a mess here. I've been fired. He raged on the other end. He was completely ignoring his own actions. I didn't ask for you to be fired, isn't it your fault? After all your cheating and messing around with other women, don't blame me. And don't make up my parents' funeral, that's just bad luck. This isn't a child faking a sick day. Once I started, I couldn't stop. The things I've been holding back all this time suddenly came pouring out like a dam breaking. I unleashed a torrent of verbal abuse just to get it off my chest, and then issued an ultimatum. Go stay with her. I'll move out in a week. We're getting a divorce. I finally said it. I had mostly packed my things during that week. Okay, okay, calm down. There seems to be some misunderstanding. I'll wait at home. Let's dark. He realized I wasn't going to be fooled as usual when he felt my resolve. There's really nothing to discuss, but I just want to clear the air. Fine. I'll be home around 7. I needed to get him out of my workplace, so I sent him home. True to my word, I returned home after 7 with a heavy heart. My husband was there, drunk and flushed. I didn't want my daughter to witness a battleground, so she was staying with a friend. While waiting for me, my husband probably could do nothing but distract himself with alcohol. Realizing he couldn't even think to unpack his bags from his trip, I felt certain he would never change. You really did it, destroying my life. He yelled as soon as he saw me. That's what he did himself. It sounded like he was acknowledging his own actions. Suddenly, I was slapped hard across the face twice. I was stunned at first, not realizing what happened, but my face stung, confirming I'd been hit. Out of fear, I grabbed a cushion and a book nearby and threw them at him. Stop it, calm down, please. Just when I felt I might continue to be hit, a man burst through the door. Josh, my father-in-law, rushed in and stopped my husband. You've done something terrible. And now you're hitting your own wife. And Sarah, my mother-in-law, came in after him, flustered. This stupid son. She cried while hitting Kenny. She's to blame. She orchestrated it all. You're the one to blame. You caused all of this. Are you okay? My parents came into the room late. Seeing my face, my father immediately understood what happened and lunged at my husband. How dare you do this to our precious daughter? You've hurt her, both emotionally and physically. He was completely beside himself. It's okay now, you don't have to endure any more. My mother said as she hugged me tightly. Relieved, I started crying. After a few slaps, Josh grabbed Kenny's head and turned him to face me. I'm terribly sorry for what he's done to your daughter. He apologized profusely to me and my parents. I'm really sorry, Emily. I can't apologize enough for what my son has done to you and Hannah. I don't know how I can ever make amends. Sarah said, crying as she apologized to me. Sarah, it's not your fault. It's Kenny who is to blame. I have to take some responsibility for not noticing. I said, although I didn't really feel that way, but I couldn't help saying it when I saw Sarah's face. Unlike Sarah and Josh, my husband's anger towards me hadn't subsided, and after being beaten by his father, he glared at us like a demon. 
Josh hit him again and continued to apologize. Seeing that my husband showed no sign of remorse, Josh promised to come back and apologize again, and then he, my husband, and Sarah left. My parents, worried, couldn't stand to leave things as they were and suggested that my daughter and I should come back and stay with them until things calmed down. Everything was finally over, and exhausted both physically and emotionally, I gladly accepted their offer. My daughter and I began living with my parents. Every day my husband calls, saying, let's start over. I can't make it without you guys, and I love you guys, over and over. I blocked his calls and emails. Still, he tried to reach me, so I quit social media and even cancelled my cell phone to start fresh. Then, he began showing up near my workplace. He's saying things like, I'll stay at home and you work, then everything will work out. You're the reason I lost my job, so lend me some money, take responsibility. I trembled with fear, not knowing what he might do next. It was a nuisance at work, and I couldn't bear the thought of being harmed again. There was even a chance it could escalate to him using a knife. Desperate, I went to the police station with a medical report I had saved when I was hit and reported I was being stalked. After explaining everything to the police and showing the medical report, I filed a report for assault. This meant exposing my husband to the police. Though the injuries weren't serious, I was able to obtain a restraining order against him for both me and my daughter. It might just be a small consolation, but it felt like the police were protecting us from my ex-husband. Thanks to involving the police and having both our parents witness what was happening, the divorce went smoothly. As a gesture of apology, I received a larger-than-usual alimony, and of course, I got custody of our daughter. With that money, I decided to buy a condo near my workplace, and we moved there. I plan to receive child support payments from him every month. The reason it's just a plan is that after being fired, my ex-husband hasn't been successful in finding a new job. He was always more about delegating to others than doing actual work, which, unfortunately, hasn't served him well in securing new employment. He can't seem to hold down a job for long. Josh and Sarah have offered to pay child support instead, but I want to draw a line there. Certainly, for Josh and Sarah, who consider their only granddaughter very dear, I won't stop them from visiting her regularly and providing some gifts. While I can't accept a large sum of money, I believe it's a win-win situation for both Hannah and my in-laws to receive presents like the clothes she desires. I even hope for them to continue this good relationship in the future. Now that everything has settled down and we've moved into the new condo, my daughter and I support each other and live our daily lives together. I've been entrusted with more responsibility at work, and my income has significantly increased. We live comfortably, just the two of us, without needing anyone's help. Living near my parents, we spend a lot of weekends together, and my daughter is dearly loved by both sets of grandparents, growing up healthy and happy. My kind daughter wants to become a nurse and is studying for college entrance exams. Recently, I met a serious-minded man at work, and we've started going to cafes together occasionally. I'm thinking of having him meet my daughter once I'm more certain about him. My daughter is about to celebrate her 20th birthday. As we choose her birthday gift together, I am touched by how much she has grown. Going forward, I look forward to continuing our close and fulfilling life as mother and daughter.